live on the showcase field for a game between Titan from Quebec and our other team is Vortex from BC. I'm here with Robbie Anderson. Bobby Anderson. Oh my god, I totally <laughs> already messed up your name. Awesome. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm Allison Fisher. Want to tell me what we're looking at here? What? Uh, how did Vortex do in their first game? Uh, well, they actually just upset the number two seed Toro, so they're pretty pumped about that. They ended up coming second out of BC at their regional qualifier. So they're kind of looking for some uh, revenge here, I guess, if you will. And they're pretty pumped to play this Quebec team because they haven't seen them yet this year. And Quebec Titan starts with a huge pull to the front of the end zone. Looks like Vortex is running a vertical stack isolation player downfield. Nice open side pass number 66. Looks off the open side huck. Oh, but there's possibly a call on the field. T10 players down. The disc is going back. I can't really see what the observer is signaling at this current point in time. I guess they're discussing where the disc goes to and the disc will stay with Vortex 66. Right, okay, and so T10 also, they played a really tight game this morning against Mischief, which I believe is another team from BC, and they won on Universe 12-11. So some exciting games this morning. And it looks like the disc is coming in, stalling one. Thanks to the Observer for ign indicating that. Defensive player on T10 is going to catch up. for the dump. Nice dump pass. Continuation. Titan is poaching. Oh, hand block by number 35. Great hand block. Up to number 15. Looking upfield. Dump again. Nice break around back end for the score by number 16. Etienne Lamarche. Great job. Titan takes a one point lead. So that was an exciting little uh, defensive play right there on the hand block. Yeah, Titan already coming out with the defensive pressure. Vortex started out in a bit of a vertical stack, and then after that foul call, they ended up going horizontal and just weren't able to swing the disc around because of the pressure of the Quebec defense. And then the nice active feet by the defender there got the hand block and ended up in the score for their team. All right, so that's a break to start for Titan coming out once again on defense. One nothing. So it looks like the wind could be a little bit of a factor here. It's kind of blowing right in our face up in the commentator's booth here. So a bit of a crosswind for these teams to deal with. Might have had a little bit of an effect on them trying to swing the disc across the field. So we'll see how they're able to deal with it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it's getting windier also. I did the first live stream broadcast this morning and the wind was a factor for the first couple of points until the, everybody figured out how they're supposed to throw in it but it looks like maybe it's picking up a little bit this afternoon. So we'll see how that goes for them. All right, here we go. We're getting set for the pull from Titan. And the pull is up. Nice pull. Hanging long time, is it going to stay in bounds? That's the question. And it does. And the D is there, set up, even before Vortex picks up the disc. Vortex is in a classic horizontal. Working it up nice to the close sideline here. Looks like Titan's playing some kind of a junk look with a possibly 1 3 3. Vortex has it on the far sideline. Swing to number 66. Again to 99. They're just moving it very easily. Not really challenged on the resets at this current point. And 13 takes the deep shot. Oh, nice try on the grab. Unfortunately, it just tipped out of his hands. That was number 34. Tips out of his hands. 
Yeah, Vortex was definitely looking a lot more calm on that point. They weren't really having as much pressure as you're saying on the resets, but just an unfortunate slip there made him have to kind of throw up that Hail Mary and just bounced right out of his hands. Yeah, it's always tough when your uh, your jump reset ends up slipping on the turf and you don't have an option backfield. All right, let's see what Titan can do going upfield. They're working on the open side. Looking for the deep shot, don't have it. Nice power position cut. Undercut. Oh, great bid by the Vortex defender. That was close. Titan managed to keep a hold of it. Number 14, looking for his reset. Oh, great grab. Number 21 on Titan goes and gets that disc that was somewhat floating in the wind. Perhaps not the intended receiver, but successful nonetheless. <laughs> and great dump. Continue the break side. Here we go. Does once again looks like the uh, defensive pressure on the resets not super aggressive. Ten looking for an open side cut. Now looking reset. Looking reset. Oh, I believe that is a foul call. Uncontested foul, probably coming in at zero. Oh, nice strike up the line. Excellent inside out throw to number 28, who puts it into space to number 88 for the score. And 88 is Charles Richard. Great score. That's two breaks in a row for Titan. Well, Vortex's O-line did a great job there on the end zone. They really held them there for quite a while, but uh, they were just able to get that shot to the back end. And again, it kind of looked like a bit of a Hail Mary. There was lots of pressure on the reset, especially on that end zone line, and then the cutter was just able to break free. Yeah, and that was great vision and patience by the handler to just hold it until he had an option. All right, so Titan takes two breaks, which if we go by the rankings in the tournament, Titan, I believe, is ranked fourth, and Vortex is ranked seventh or sixth, so technically it's going as expected based on the ranking um you're telling me something interesting about vortex that they haven't had a lot of opportunity to practice together yeah i was just uh chatting with the coach before and he was saying that just due to school schedules and the way their season goes out they haven't had a ton of practices where the whole team has been there so they ended up coming second out of regionals which they were kind of happy about but <laughs> obviously not super thrilled but they um um, just beat Toro, the second seed, so he feels like they're kind of peaking at the right point despite not having a bunch of practices together, so I think it could just be kind of nerves here and just need to settle into this game. What a huge pull. Landed in the end zone, rolled out the back. This means Vortex is going to be taking it on the back of the end zone line. That's a tough spot to try to dig out of. Oh, nope. Apparently he's allowed to take it to the front line. Interesting. All right, here we go, number 22. 66, resets. They're still in the end zone, looking to get it out of there. Keep the disc moving. Stan is playing nice, tight defense. It looks like person D with a little bit of poaching into the open side space. Handlers working it up nicely on Vortex. Good sh oh, what a layout D block. And caught. Double effort on D. Good job, number 11, to pull that down. Oh, but he has a miscue with number 12 and slightly throws behind him, makes it a tough turnover. And Vortex gets the disc back. Here we go on the sideline. Looks like Titan has a poach in the space, open side space. Some kind of junk. Vortex is very patient, taking their time. They're not rushing their throws. They're just looking for the open spaces, easily putting it into the, the space that Titan is giving them. Nice, chilly resets. They don't look very phased by the wind right now, even though it is blowing pretty hard. Oh, and as you can see by that scuber, the wind just pushed the disc right down. All right, T10 just outside their own end zone. The other T's that don't with an easy score to number 29. And that's another break. So T10 is up 3-0 early in this game.
Well, the Vortex handlers were doing a great job moving the disc around there, but their cutters are kind of a little stagnant behind that zone wall. It'd be good to see them getting a little more involved as the handlers start to make the movement. I agree with that. It looked like they were quite far back. It's hard to give your handlers options when your cutters are really far behind the defensive wall. Especially as they are getting a little more accustomed to the wind, those cutters are going to want to come closer and pop into that cup as the handlers are making those moves. Those longer throws over the cup, as we can see from that scuba, are a little bit more challenging in these conditions. I, I love when I'm just in the middle of saying how nice and patient they are <laughs> and scuba over the top. Not that scubas are, are not usually the right choice. We saw in the previous game as well, from a similar position on the field, a hammer that went across field that just dropped like that too. It's really hard in the wind when you're trying to throw quite that far with a scuba or a hammer. And it looks like Vortex has taken a timeout here. They're off to our left, probably discussing a little bit of how they need to just relax. It's not a big deal. The Titan is up three breaks. They're gonna. There's a long game to go. You know, they just need to play their game, focus on what they need to get done, not worry about the other team. What do you think the Titan is coach is telling his players? I think they're probably just talking about keeping that defensive pressure up. They've seen that their zone can be very effective in this win. They just forced a really short field turnover for them, and it was an easy score with one throw. So. I imagine he's just saying keep doing the same things and capitalizing on those turnovers. Yeah, and that's what you really have to keep doing, just thinking, you know, point by point, throw by throw, worry about what's happening right now. Can't get caught up in the score too much. All right, let's see what they come out with as their offensive set. Down three breaks. I believe they will be going as we discussed wind earlier it's a little bit tough to tell but it looks like they're going to have the uh, wind advantage at this point uh, throwing with as opposed to against the wind so maybe they'll have an easier time getting the disc into the end zone it'll be interesting to see Titans had some success both with man and zone so it'll be interesting to see whether they keep that zone look on or if because they have the wind now are they going to go back to person D yeah be interesting to see what they do decide to do. Their their junky look has been very successful thus far. Um, but once again, with the wind as a factor, let's see what they do. Nice pull into the wind. It's going to land just outside the end zone. Vortex gets the disc in the middle field. It does look like T10 is coming out with some kind of 1-3-3 three, three and miscue by number 99 on Vortex. T10 has a short field to score up win. Number seven with the disc, fakes the hammer, dumps to number 15. He's looking for the IO flick, but gives it back to his number seven handler. He gives it back and goes up line. Is he gonna get the disc? No, number 98, looking for the reset, hits number 15, who throws a nice lefty IO backhand. Unfortunately, there was no one there to catch it. It was a good look, a nice flat throw. It just looked like his receivers weren't expecting it. That's definitely the throw you want to come out of that set with the definitely stack the there. There want. just needs to be a cutter there. <laughs> I agree with that. Oh, a little bit of a miscue on that throw. Oh, oh wow. a very nice grab by number 99 to save the day. Let's see if Vortex can get the disc moving up the field. You almost feel like if they just could keep it moving, they'd have a better better success. Unfortunately, once again, it looked like there was a miscue. He dumped it to the backfield, but there was no one there to catch it. So we'll see T10 again with the opportunity to score up win on a relatively short field. Oh, <laughs> what a nice layout grab by number seven. And that is Raphael Lalande Lampy. Great, great energy and effort to go back and get that, even though there was a defender in his way. Yeah, again, a little bit of a miscue, but really just like a pure heart play to keep his head up and read the disc and then putting his body on the line to go and get that for the score. Yeah, that was impressive. And the score is now 4 0 Titan, who started on defense, as we know, so they are up for breaks. 
Does it feel like to you that it looks like perhaps Vortex is just, they just need to get their heads in the game. They just need to turn and turn up the intensity a little bit. Yeah, I think that's the difference that we're seeing between these two teams. Titan is really fired up. They've had some awesome grabs and they're using that energy to keep those breaks going. And it seems like Vortex just needs to take a bit of a breath, but then also ramp up the intensity and just get their handlers on the same page. Yeah, I agree. All right, so we're gonna have Eloi with the pull. I believe he is the one who pulled it out the back of the end zone the last time. Let's see what happens this time. Nice pull, center of the end zone, picked up by Vortex. And once again, we see a junk look. Vortex is working it. Once again, as we saw, calmly between the handlers. Number 22 with the Frisbee. They're making nice, easy, short passes. And as we notice again, the cutters are quite far behind the wall. Uh, there we have a breakthrough, number 11. Moving into the near sideline. Great pass to number 24. Are they gonna be able to continue their momentum? Maintain possession of the Frisbee. Good job, passing number 31. They're continuing their motion in the backfield. The handlers are moving it very nicely. They could use some opportunities to hit cutters. And great throw over the top to number 24, who puts it long to number double zero. And a score for Vortex. Great job. Way to be patient and work through that though. Yeah, it seems that was really the shot that they needed. They just needed to break out of that zone and get the cutters a little more involved. The handlers were doing a great job, but they just, once they got to the cutters, then as we can see, they have very capable throwers and it was an easy throw for a score. Yeah, that was nice to see them get on the board. So we are now 4-1 and we will see Vortex for the first time on defense. I believe you talked to their coach and they don't actually play any type of zone. No, they uh, are pretty confident in their person defense. And as he was saying, they kind of like to feel the other team out and see what they have at the beginning and see if they are capable of making those long throws and then just adjust from there. That's very interesting that, in a, especially in a w on a windy situation like today, that you wouldn't consider throwing some kind of defensive look that requires a lot of passes and increases the opportunities for mistakes or miscues by the other team. All right, well, let's see what their person D can do. It'll be interesting to see also what Titan is gonna run on offense, as we haven't seen them come out on over yet. It does look like there's, we have definitely seen a few players out there so far on their O-line that have been crossing over to the D-line, but yes, oh, number looks like Iowa. we have an offside here. So there will be a repull. All right, let's see what's gonna happen. So Vortex is really going to want to be careful now because the consequences for being offside a second time in a game are quite severe. The other team actually gets it at your brick mark. So nice clean nice pull there. <laughs> nice clean pull. Dish to the middle of the field. And we're looking for a big under gainer, I believe. Nice pass towards the middle. Titan is moving it very nicely. They don't seem to be suffering from defensive pressure. Oh, what a recovery. The, do the second efforts are looking really great here. Number seven has it just outside the end zone line. Looking for number 35. Oh, <laughs> double coverage. Manages to pull the disc down. That's once again, Eliot Edouard seems to be involved quite a bit yeah. on both <laughs> offense and defense at this point in the game. Despite the uh, the throw, there maybe were not necessarily miscues on throws, but it looked like Titan maybe need to practice a little bit in what it's like to throw going upwind. 
Yeah, they're getting a little lucky here with some of the ones that are floating up in the air and they do have some height on their team as well that they're definitely using to pull those down, but they uh, are definitely going to want to clean those throws up as they are giving Vortex a chance to get in there. Right. I mean, I think they really they, had, they, they do seem to have a height advantage and at this point of the game, their effort in going to get those discs, even if they're tipped or you know floating maybe a little bit too high, um, seems more intense than what we're seeing from Vortex thus far. And they're being rewarded for it, as you can see, they're up now, and that's really just been the difference, is those second chance opportunities, they've been coming down with them. Right, and it's reflecting the score, 5-0. So, Suzanne on defense, the Vortex is gonna be going pretty stiff upwind from what we can see from the flags right now. I am going to wager a bet that 10 is gonna throw some type of junk as it has been working thus far. And one of the teams is offside. The question is, which team? I believe it was Titan. Something about that end zone down there. <laughs> Hard to see the line. Yeah. Those white lines. <laughs> Tough to see. All right, so we're gonna have another, our second repull of the game. If it is T10, then both teams are now on a somewhat dangerous scenario for pulling. And the disc goes out, they will take it at the brick mark in the middle of the field. That was an interesting pull. Do you see how far he stood behind the line before <laughs> he released it? He was a good, good he wanted, five yards behind He the line. wanted to be safe. It's always hard to adjust your pulls when you're really worried about where your feet are on the line. Oh, almost a poach block by Titan there. But Vortex is able to get it through, and that's what we saw them do last time when they were able to score. Get it through, break it behind the, the wall that Titan has. The observer is calling out Titan's disc. That's unfortunate. Swing, looking for the cross field pass. Not a lot of action from downfield. Pretty sure he was at a very high stall count, didn't have a lot of opportunities in that scenario. What else are you gonna do but put it long? Yeah, it's not a bad strategy in this wind. <laughs> Force Vortex to work it up. All right, looks like Titan is still playing their junk D, number 99 with the disc pretty close to the sideline. He needs an opportunity to throw it. Ooh, I would have to say that was quite a dangerous bid by number 16 of Titan. Late. It was a late bid. Uh, Vortex is, needs to dig themselves out of this hole. They're currently in the, their own end zone trying to get the disc out away from Titan's defense. Nice break through the middle to number 21. Continue over to number 88 on the close side. Looking for options. Oh, great pass upfield. Is he going to be able to keep it in? And he does keep it in. Number three. Great job, number three, Wong, to keep it in. All right, now he does he have an option. Yes, dump, swing, keep it moving across the field. This looks like nice offense by the Vortex. They're patient, they're calm. They don't seem to be overly phased by how many passes they're going to have to make. Ooh, great grab by number 21 to save that disc. Layout. Dump. Oh, and a miscue, but great defensive effort by Titan. Number 98 with the disc on the near side here, looking long. What a beautiful floating pass to number seven for the score. Lalande Landry scores again. That was an excellent, excellent vision. Yeah, he really put that where only his receiver could get it. It was perfectly air right out in front of him. He had time to run onto it and the defense just really didn't have a chance to get under it. Yeah, that was really pretty. So the score will now be 6-1 Titan. You could almost start talking about a blowout at this point. Let's see if Vortex is able to regroup, pull it back together. They're going downwind. They looked really solid on that offensive point all the way up until the end zone when they kind of switched into their vertical stack there. 
they just had a little bit of a miscue and the defense was able to poach and read that. But if they can keep that going, then they'll be able to get back into this game and then they just need to bring the intensity on defense. I agree, and it, it almost looks like what you were discussing before, how how they haven't had a lot of opportunity to play and practice together. You can almost see that on the field with, you know, the handlers working well together, and then as soon as it gets up to a cutter who maybe they don't pass you all that often because they haven't had a lot of time to develop chemistry, all of a sudden, you know, that's, oh, I thought you were, or were you going, or not 100% confident where that cutter is going to go, and then the throw goes up, and that happens to be not where the cutter is going. Here we go, working downfield, number 31, to number 22, and a low, very quick release pass, slightly too far in front. It was a great look. His receiver definitely had some yards on his defender there, just a little bit too low for him to get under that. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to want that back. Maybe he's going to go get it on D and then have another opportunity to make that pass. Oh, <laughs> great defensive play by number 88 on Vortex. Just ran right past his defender, his offender, grabbed the Frisbee. And now Vortex is just outside their own end zone, able to score. And did they score? They did. Number 11, Tyler Ma. Well, that's exactly the stop that they needed there. They got it back for themselves. They had a really good look, but it just sailed a little too far but really nice run through defensive play and they're able to get the score. Sorry, that was not Tyler Ma, but on our, on our score sheet, we have two number 11s. Uh, so we're not quite sure which one that was, but good job number 11 for scoring. All right, and the score is now 6-2 for Tipan. So we saw a little bit of defensive life from Vortex there on that point. We'll see if they can bring it out on their D line and really put some pressure on this Titan team. Yeah, he, that was a great play by Harrison to go and get that D. He was behind. He just turned on the guns and blew by his offender to catch that pass. That was really nice. We'd like to see some more of that, I think. <laughs> well, we've definitely seen it from Titan. I would like to see more of it from Vortex. All right, we have now Titan coming down on offense. They have the wind at their backs. Will they be able to make the right pass to score in the end zone. It's tough when you're throwing with the wind. Everyone always thinks it's tough to throw into the wind, but throwing with the wind is, I would argue, equally or tougher sometimes. Well, and that's what we saw with that last point. Vortex's first initial huck just got pushed right down by the wind. So I'd agree, it's equally as challenging both ways. Oh, great pass. <laughs> Number one, Dre. or something to throw to. The stall count is getting very high. And he manages to squeak it through to number 19. He passes again to number 29. He throws a nice IO flick for the score. Number 93, Yann Eric Jérôme. Great grab. That was a beautiful throw. Yeah, the, those IO throws, they really uh, break open the offense and give you so much room on that break side. As a coach, that's really what you love to see is those dump swing, use the break side, take the right pass, throw in front of your receiver. And it seems that Titan definitely is a little more comfortable with each other. They know where each other is going to be and they're able to just get that dump swing and he knew that his cutter was going to be there and is able to just throw the IO immediately. Doesn't even give the defense a chance to catch up. I agree. Titan definitely seems to be playing with no hesitation. They just trust their players completely. They know where they're going to be. It looks great. All right, so the score is now 7-2. We will see if Vortex is able to score another point before we reach half. As most people have experienced while playing Ultimate, it really can be a game of runs. So Vortex is definitely going to want to go on one of those before half here and kind of get back into this game before half and then maybe do a little bit of regrouping and have a chat about what's happening with their cutting down field and then there's a whole another half of game to play. And I think uh, what happens a lot with juniors, there's just not a lot of footage of other teams, so it's hard for the coaches to, you know, have a game plan based on what the other team does ahead of time. Oh, what a nice pass, leading pass to number 24 who runs it down for the score. 
That was a beautiful, that was probably the best offensive set we've seen from Vortex. Definitely, and I think that's kind of the game they want to play. They've just been having some problems figuring out this wind, but hopefully with this one, they now have it figured out and can bring that intensity on defense. That was great. All right, so they, I believe, have now brought the score to 7-3. Let's see if they're able to go out and get a D and possibly change the momentum of this game. sure the T10 coaches out there saying don't worry about it boys we got this we just gotta take it nice and easy play our game focus on what we have to do step by step point by point yeah let's, let's go get half doing what you're doing <laughs> It'll be interesting to see this defensive possession. The coach of Vortex mentioned that they really like to put a lot of pressure on the unders. So going in this direction, Titan definitely has the wind. We've seen a couple nice hucks in this direction now. So we'll have to see how they adjust to that and if they can challenge those deep shots. Yeah, because you know that Titan's gonna be looking for them. They've, they've thrown them quite a few times already. All right, and the pull is up. Looks like it's possibly going to go out of bounds, and it does. So Titan will get it at the brick mark right here to where I believe the orange cones are. You can see on the side the small cone indicating where the brick is. And Titan is set up in a horizontal stack. Defensive pressure is challenging the under but taking away the deep right now on the vortex side. Titan has it on the far side. Looking open, pass to number one. He does seem to be their primary on the offensive line. Looking for an option, looking for an option. Puts up a pretty high pass. Oh, and Vortex is able to come down with it. All right, Vortex is having their opportunity to go score upwind. Good defensive pressure by Titan. Oh, almost a hand block there. 31 with the disc, pass to double zero to a wide open receiver, number four. Oh, very dangerous bid by number 22. The observer is coming on the field. Not sure. Oh, and they're hugging it. They're <laughs> hugging it out. Everyone's Looks like it's all good. <laughs> all good. All good. <laughs> Looks like I don't think 22 intended to do that. I think it was just a little bit late. All right, we have 22 matched up against 22. Vortex is looking for the under. Nice catch by 99. This is double zero coming. Oh, just a little. Popped right out of his hands. He had that disc. All right, Vortex back on defense. Let's see if Titan can put it in and take half. Seems like he's had the disc. Oh, there we go. Okay, number 12 with the disc and the IO pass. Oh, great vision. Looking for number 11. Not able to reel it in. Looks like number 11 on Vortex possibly got injured on the play. has been a high intensity point. Lots of bodies on the ground flying around. So far everyone's been okay. Seems it looks okay. like he's just shaken up a little bit. Maybe probably had the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, and I don't I don't believe there's a call on the play either. There will be a substitution on Vortex number 24 coming in and on Titan number 7 comes in to replace number 1. Alright, let's see what Vortex is going to do. Number 31 is going to walk the disc up to the front line. It will be marked by number 99 on Titan. Vortex is set up horizontal. Huge deep throw off from the end zone. Oh, 24 goes up, but it's slightly too early. Edouard comes down with the frisbee, number 35 on Titan.
He has it back now, and he throws another <laughs> deep shot. Maybe a point of deep shots. That was quite far out the back. <laughs> Little too much power, forgetting that he has the wind at his back there, perhaps. It was excellent defense. Those are really tough ones when you you throw a deep shot up wind and it floats, and everybody's under it. You have to have that discussion with yourself. Am I going to jump early and try to make my my defender misread it, or do I try to time my jump so that I'm able to catch it at the opportune time? It's tough. Uh, almost <laughs> turnover on the end zone line. Titan has it right outside, and they score. Number 11, Charles Gay. Good job. Titan, they take half. That is 8 3. Halftime will be five minutes, as was just indicated by the observer. So, what do you think? Well, that last point, uh, Vortex was starting to look a little more comfortable, especially going upwind, and they just had a couple unfortunate dropped and drops and mistimed jumps there. I think they're really going to want to talk about keeping that rhythm going that they have, but also, as we've been saying, just ramping up their defensive intensity. Titan is definitely just playing with a little more energy and that's kind of making things go their way. Those second chance opportunities have really happened for them and that's just the difference that has taken them to half. Right, so when we will be coming back from half, it will be Titan starting on offense. And we will be back within the next three minutes. Thanks for listening. All right, welcome back. We are getting set for the second half of this game between Titan and Vortex. It will be Vortex with the pull. It will be Titan receiving, going 
into the wind. So far, it hasn't seemed to have affected them too much. Let's see how the second half unfolds. What would you really like to see coming out of the second half? Well, we talked about it kind of the whole first half that we'd like to see a little more energy from the Vortex side. They're maybe a little tired after their first game. I think they had a pretty exciting one. So just getting their heads back into this and uh, kind of bringing their energy up to the level of Titan. They're really going for every disc, anything that bounces up into the air, they're following it and coming down with those. And uh, I would just really like to see them kind of match that energy. I agree. Nice pull, good distance, unfortunately going out. So Titan will get it on the brick mark to start. Both teams have already had an offside on their pull and you can kind of see him on that one. He had to take a little stutter step as he realized he was getting a little close to the line there. So maybe affected that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it'll be uh, Edouard with the disc in the middle to start. Looks like their Titan is running an isolation play. They've isolated number 15 in the lane. Everyone else is basically just standing waiting. There's number 22, oh, with a great grab under pressure. Open side cut, number 15 has the disc, looking break, break side. Number 19, good pass, number 93, still on the open side. 98 has it, nice flick to an easy open side cut by number 22 again. That looked pretty smooth, <laughs> very smooth. <laughs> Vortex did a great job of taking away that first cut. They recognized the ISO, and I think that defender really dug in and did his job there. The rest of the team just needs to match that energy now. I agree. Once that, once that isolation cutter got out of the lane and number 22 cut in, that was basically the end of it. Titan just was open the entire time on the open side of the field. Well, number 22 also made a very nice grab under pressure, so... I can't really, can't really fault Vortex for that. That was a great grab. <laughs> that was a great grab. Opened up the field. And I think those types of situations, those types of grabs, they, they pump your team up. You know, on the field, you see your teammate do that. And then you try a little bit harder because you're like, wow, if he can do it, I can do it. Yeah, I think that's true. And that's ki the kind of play that Vortex just needs right now, something that's going to get them going. And we'll see if there's anyone on the team that can kind of light their fire. <laughs> I agree. And well, they're going to have a tough job going upwind again. Although Titan made it look easy, so maybe Vortex will be, be able to make it look easy also. As you mentioned, both teams have had a pulling violation offside call. They are all well behind the line <laughs> to start. <laughs> Being very careful about that line. That's a big pull. Looks like it's possibly going to land inbounds, close to the back of the end zone. Vortex is already set up with their three handlers back, looking to move it. Break through the first wall of defense. Excellent job. Number 66 getting involved right now in the middle of the field. 21 through the middle. Just need to keep it moving. And 66 puts it up deep. Unfortunately, it was a bit low on the throw and turnover. Titan is able to come down with it. Titan, oh, <laughs> Titan looking deep, blocked by Vortex. That's a pretty good defensive play. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's what we want. All right, let's see if Vortex can walk it up on this opportunity. Number 21 chasing it down. Great job, has it on the close sideline to us here looking middle of the field number 66 has the disc and a nice put to space 21 back resets to the break side continue pass is he going to be able to catch it oh, oh great great bit effort in the end zone. unfortunately just tipped off his hands and Vor vortex is going back on defense they are playing a. Th hey, they're actually playing they some kind of a zone. zone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that his uh, the coach decided that it was time with the win to try something new. Why not? Titan working it nicely, swing to the far side of the field. Let's see if they're going to go back in the other direction. Vortex with a nice trapping zone right there. 
making it hard for Tifan to work it. Disc is in the middle, looking upfield to the open player. And number 88 just puts it out to space to number 14, who just jogs into the end zone. That's Maya Garcia with the score. Once again, Titan makes it look easy on offense. Well, I'm sure Lamba probably wants that one back. He kind of, he bit on the under there and that just left the other receiver wide open. Looks like on the field right now, the observer is holding up a blue card for number 34. I actually do not know what a blue card is. Do you? I believe that's a player violation, so you can either get a team violation or just for a specific player. It can either be for like dangerous plays or things like that. So I'm not exactly sure what he did as we were kind of focused on the we're other end on the zone. The end zone game. Uh, interesting. So yes, that's right. You can have a team violation or a personal violation. And I believe if you get two, then you are ejected from the game. Is that correct? Yeah. So Vortex has to be careful now. Number 34. So the start of that point, they were kind of doing exactly what we wanted them to. They were moving the disc. There was a little more anticipation from their cutters. They turned it over, but then they had a great defensive play, and they almost punched it into the end zone, but just out of the hands of that player that made that nice bid. That was a great bid. That's a tough angle of throw too, right? I mean, it's right right on the sideline. You gotta be careful with your feet. You gotta be worried about, are you gonna stay in bounds when you catch it? There's a lot of things to think about as you're, as you're the receiver and it was a little bit far, let's say, for him to be able to catch it on his feet. Yeah. So definitely some signs of frustration coming from the vortex line and sideline. They look a little dejected here, but one thing that I would like them to keep in mind is it is a long tournament. This is their second game and they haven't played together a lot so they just really need to stay positive and try and work these kinks out so they can do well for the rest of the tournament. I agree. With a score of 10-3, it's not surprising that you might be dejected but here we go. I believe that Stan was offside again on the pull. And therefore, I can hear the observer saying, okay, guys, you set up like after it's a timeout. We will see what is gonna happen here. Each team gets a chance to set up as if it were a timeout. Offense sets and then defense will take position. So it looks like Vortex will be getting it at half field. White has 10 seconds left before they have to freeze. So a bit of a break here for Vortex. They're getting to set up halfway down the field instead of at their own end zone. We'll see if they can do something with this. All right, and defense is gonna set. Interestingly, they have four handlers back, four handlers back and three cutters not really spread across the field. They're sort of all in the same half. I think both teams are a little bit confused. I don't think they've ever experienced what happens when you're offside twice in a game as the observers were kind of having to talk them through what went on. Oh, and just beautiful huck, deep. Is he gonna be able to, oh. oh. Almost, almost, that was really close, great bid. Just looked like it was on the back line. Pretty tough catch by number 99. He almost had it. All right, so we have Titan going upwind. Will they be able to get another break? Vortex is maintaining their zone, giving Titan a challenge. And turnover. Vortex will have another opportunity starting from this near sideline to score. And the force is going to be home. <laughs> As we can hear uh, yelling from the sideline. All right, number 70, 66 with the disc. Nice throw to space. Was he able to jump in? Number 34, yes, the observer is ruling it a goal. 
that brings the score to 10-4 for Titan. Bit of an interesting point <laughs> there. Started with the offside and they weren't able to capitalize on that, but then just a miscue from Titan and they were able to get it back for the hold. Yeah, and that was actually nice offensive flow by Vortex. I think when they are not challenged with the zone, they do quite well. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see what Titan does here. One of the harder things in Ultimate is being able to close out teams when you get a big lead, keeping that intensity so you can finish off the game. It's definitely one of the mental struggles that I can find that teams have. And it's actually important because, you know, as the tournament goes on, you're going to be playing more challenging games. And the less tired you are, the, the, the least amount of game time you have in your body, the better you are going on through the tournament. So in games like this, when you let the other team come back and come back and come back, even if you, c you succeed in winning, it's much tougher later on than if you just close them out quickly. Well, and the other thing is we've seen these tournaments go down to points very often if there ends up being a three-way tie, as we've seen um, Vortex beat the number two seed, Toro, so this pool could end up coming down to points. So it's really important for uh, Titan to just close this game out. I agree. Win, win early, and win fast. And by a lot of points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the things. All right, so we're having Vortex playing a zone once again. It looks like a standard three-person zone. T10 seems to be working pretty well. They've got three handlers back. Not rushing their passes. However, miscue. It was a throw that looked like it was for Edouard, but he maybe thought it was for someone behind him. And now we have Vortex about with about a third of the field left to go. For a score. Oh, and he throws a big Hail Mary up into the <laughs> up into the end zone space. And it looks like he maybe was fouled. There seems to be a call on the play. Uncontested stall. That throw did look like a very late in the stall count throw. So if it's an uncontested stall, it will be a turnover where number 31 and number 22 are as the throwers in that situation. Well, we'll see if they put the zone back on. They were able to get the turnover on the last possession and it just goes to show how just changing your defense up a little bit can make the other team falter. Titan was getting very comfortable with that person defense that they were throwing on them before. So, and it does look like they're going back into it. Titan is working it. They're taking what's available. They're taking the open side space. Uh, managed to throw it back on the break side. Back to the open side, number 16 on close side near us. Little dish, number seven. And number seven had to work pretty hard to get that disc off there. He's still on the sideline. Cross field, those overhead cross field passes are pretty tricky. As, as we just saw, the low passes. It's a pretty stiff wind that looks like it's coming a bit cross field now. Looks like there is a stall down call, contested stall down call. The down call has been retracted by White, therefore, disc stands with Titan. Oh, and he throws a nice hammer to number 20, looking for number 22. Double zero, double zero managed to be in the space. He, I don't think he touched it, but maybe his presence enough was caused that turn. Yeah, kind of caused the Titan receiver to misread it a bit there. All right, so here we have a big hawk to number seven. Oh, what a nice bid. Tried to catch it, coming in on a pretty steep angle with a defender on your back. That's a tough catch. And we have Titan going back the other way. Looks like. Vortex is sticking with their zone. It has been successful thus far. Well, those are definitely the throws you want to be forcing in this wind, a high release flick across the field. Yeah. Well, that's a nice hammer. Is it catchable though? Unfortunately, no, 98 just couldn't read that disc to bring it down. Um, looks like Vortex had an opportunity, 
another turnover. I think the wind is picking up even more than it was before. I think it is too. Timeout. Good call by Edouard. Number 35 on Titan. It looks like everything's just a bit messy right now. So Yeah, definitely one of our the longer points that we've seen. And I think it's because Vortex has actually tried their zone out and it's forcing the Titan handlers to throw that stuff over the top. They've had a couple hammers and high release flicks that they've been throwing over and this hasn't been working out for them. Yeah, I agree. So I guess everybody is just gonna have an opportunity to regroup, think about the passes that they're gonna wanna be making given the wind, given the change in the wind. And probably Titan is gonna talk a little bit about, okay, now they're playing zone on us, let's adjust. Sometimes it's hard to make those adjustments on the fly, you know, when you're already in the middle of a game. It's nice to have a timeout, be able to talk about it for a second, say, okay, we're gonna have four handlers back or three handlers back. We want you to crash the cup. We want the cu crashing the cup cu to come from upfield. Just make a decision as a team how you're gonna attack it. Yeah, definitely a great call and a longer point to just take a little breath and discuss what they're gonna do so they can, as we say, continue to close this game out. Right, the score is still 10-4 for Titan. And we're coming back in after a timeout. This game will be going until 2.25. So we have another 30 minutes before we hear the hard cap horn. Not surprised, unsurprisingly, Vortex is playing their zone again. <laughs> With an with their their deep player is very deep. He's well behind the cutters. On Titan. Nice pass cross. They're working it well. Oh, it looked like the defense touched it. But Titan is able to easily move it through once they break the cup. Nice give and go. Right to the defender, number 24. That's what happens when you play a zone. <laughs> <laughs> you end up throwing to a space where they, you think your cutter is open and all of a sudden there's a defender. Huge throw by number 24. Unfortunately, was not brought down by his receiver. And Titan is back on offense, swinging it nicely across the field, not really allowing Vortex to set up their cut, their cup. They've gotten it past the cup. As long as they have a little bit of patience here, they should be able to punch it in. Oh, nice look, great <laughs> grab by number 16. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was well out of bounds when he caught that. Looks like the disc is coming up about 10 yards from the end zone. And it will be Vortex's frisbee. That was a great <laughs> grab. <laughs> that was a great grab. He was shoulder height for sure. Unfortunately out of bounds, but it was definitely fun to watch. It's very interesting that this repeat huck deep to a covered player. Into the wind. Yeah, well, it seems to be going both directions <laughs> yeah. right now. And that's one of the things that happens when points get longer. There's the want to just kind of get it over with and players can get a little less patient. Uh, but Titan doing a good job of working it down. And then again, just oh, as looks interesting, like there's a interesting foul look call the here. Foul, foul. That was, let's go with an interesting throw choice. Yeah. Um, I, the high release back end to the end zone, but that was a very high release back end. And goal, right? <laughs> it was a bit yeah. confusing there because it looked like there was possibly a foul call. Um, in the end, T10 is successful on that high release pass, and it's another score. So the score well, after that marathon point, <laughs> it, it ended kind point. of in an interesting way. And uh, T10 had did the thing that we were talking about, how we are saying they are patient, they are working it up the field, and then it ends in a uh, questionable <laughs> throw. <laughs> Listen, but <it> sometimes <laughs> you just need to get, you just take yeah. what you get, right? <laughs> it's, it was a score, move on. Uh, so the score is now 11-4 for Titan. 
And that's a hard point for Vortex, too. They were battling back and forth. It was long, the wind's picking up, there was lots of hucks back and forth, and then it ends in what uh, Double Zero there thought was a good defensive play, and then ended up being a foul. And you can definitely see the frustration on their faces, but as we were talking about, this is a long tournament, and they need to get some momentum going for their next game. Yeah, and you know, 11-4, that's a tough score to work out of, but you know, at this point in the game, you know, you just start thinking about, okay, what is working for us, what is not working? How can we work on certain things in this game to improve for next game? Yeah, I think they're, they've are they realized they're at the point that this they're in a bit too deep of a hole to get out of. Um, so yeah, they just have to focus on what's happening in the next game for the rest of the weekend and what they can improve on. Because as the coach was saying, they haven't had tons of time together, so they're going to get better and better as the weekend goes on, as long as they can just stay positive and keep working on those things. Big huck from middle of the field to number 88, who goes up a little early, possibly trying to make his defender misread it. And defender gets a bid. You can T10 see he's going on again. chuckling a little bit at himself there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Which that, that, nice that was really <laughs> it was a really floaty pass for yeah. sure. And it's tough to know when you're right under it. At what point are you supposed to jump? Especially when you have a tall defender on you, you want to get that before he does. So it's good intentions, just a little too early. A little too early. And here we have Vortex once again playing their zone. I, I think they are pretty confident that it's, it's working. It's causing turnovers. So they're going to stick with it. And if they haven't really played very much zone, uh, it makes sense that they would continue to do so to work yeah. on it. Oh, what a wow. great grab. I, oh, it was almost a Callahan there. Huge, what a play. Huge heads up play by number 34 to be able to catch that and little dish pass over the shoulder of his defender for a score. And that's the energy we were talking about that they have to take into their next game. We weren't really seeing that at the beginning of the game and that allowed Titan to get out on that early lead. If they take plays like that into the rest of the weekend, they're going to have a much better showing than what this 11-5 score is showing. I totally agree with that. That was such a heads up play, you know, sometimes you just don't, there's just not a lot of opportunity for those situations to arise and when they do, it's hard to practice those particular situations. So yeah. capitalizing on it is, you really have to be, have a really high game IQ to recognize that situation and be able to go get the dish. Yeah, to be in the cup and both get the hand block and almost the Callahan, <laughs> that was a great play. Would have been even more exciting if he was in. <laughs> uh, there was a play in the last game too where I, I, I almost wish we had like a, an instant replay so we could actually relive those experiences, see what ha just how smart, how good that play actually was. He, live, it looked awesome. I'm sure on the replay it would have been even more yeah. incredible. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna wager a bet that Vortex is coming down zone. Let's see. Onside pull, step one, <laughs> great job. And the disc lands just about the brick mark and the cup is already there. So let's see if Titan is able to work around this cup. Have a nice clean offensive point. Right now we have 35, 99 and 11 for Titan working in the backfield. Their passes are looking pretty crisp right now. Oh, nice grab, number 29. The Cup's doing a great job of cutting off those break throws. The marker is really busting it to get over there and cut those off. And a nice OI flick, looking for number 16. Unfortunately, the defender was there. Challenging throw and catch, and turnover. So. Vortex's D was successful. Let's see if their O is equally successful. Looks like they've really just decided to up their punting game. There's a lot of deep hucks. And once again, Edouard gets the D. Unfortunately, turnover on his first pass. We have Vortex going the other way again with another huck. Great read by, looks like number four, Dish. And scores 11-6. Good job, Vortex. That was great. 
patience on that end line. There's lots of times you see you make a great grab on the end line and there's a cutter running up and players can tend to force that throw and he really just took a moment and realized that it wasn't an option and waited for the rest of his team to get there. Yeah, that was great. And I, th and I think Vortex, you know, they're in a situation right now where, you know, they have nothing to lose. Why not? I mean, uh, those huge hucks that are sort of a 50-50 at this point, they keep throwing them. I'm impressed. They're, they keep throwing them. I, that's their strategy. It's great. It's working for them. You know, they're causing they're causing a ton of turnovers with their zone. And uh, I really like the adjustments that the coach has made to uh, play to Vortex's strengths. Yeah. They're definitely not afraid to take risks. Yeah, and risks that are reaping rewards. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how Titan bounces back here. This is kind of the first adversity they faced in this game. Vortex is going on a bit of a run here and putting some more pressure on them with that zone. So we'll see if they're able to close this game out and get back. I agree. Zero with the pull, pretty low pull, lands just inside the end zone. Vortex's zone has an opportunity to get down. And set up. Number 16 with the disc on the far side, fakes the high release flick. Oh. Throws to number seven, looks like there's possible contact on the catch. I believe it is uncontested. Stahl comes in at one. Down, swings number 22. The wind seems to be quite strong at this current moment in time. Nice pass, continuing the motion of the disc. Cup is forcing them to the side. Titan is looking to get a break. Does manage to get it to the middle. 22, nice pass. Keeping the mo motion going. Number seven, looking for number 11. Little handler, dish passes. Number 11, putting it up on the break side. The vortex comes down with it, double zero. Good defensive grab. 24 on vortex with the frisbee. Throws a huge <laughs> hammer to the end zone and it's out the back. Interesting throw choice from that point on the field. I'm I not sure if he was getting higher up in the stall count and that was just kind of a Hail Mary, but. Watching too much AUDL. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go with Titan going back. Upwind on offense. This cup is doing a good job of making the handlers like slow down their motion. Titan is doing a lot better job when they stay moving and are really active. And this cup is making those handlers second guess that a lot. I agree, and it's there. The cup is really challenging the once the disc gets to the sideline, making it hard on the handler to, to get that throw around. And once again, cup causes another turnover. So Vortex has it just outside the end zone. Looks like it's about two yards out. Number 24 is gonna pick it up. Oh, number 24 throws into the end zone, looking for his handler who cut up the line. Defensive layout block by number 29. Awesome play, gets the disc back for Titan. This cup is really tight. And number 11 throws it away. That was tough. You can see the wind just pushed that disc right down. Uh, could possibly have been a bit of a triple team as well. <laughs> Something that Titan might want to look out for. Vortex's cup, as they get more excited, they're kind of starting to close in on that handler. I agree. That does not look to be a lot of space. Number 24 having a second opportunity to make this uh, assist. Double zero cutting into space. Oh, <laughs> does he catch it in bounce? Looks like the observer is calling him out. Wow, that Great was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, 
It was a D and then a grab and then questionable whether he's inbounds or not. We'll see All right, if, uh, Titan is just gonna hawk it. They've had enough of this working through. It back the other way to number 22 gets a D. All right, a little bit of uh, punt and punt and play D by both teams at this current moment. I agree with you, if Titan just gets the disc moving and keeps it moving, they're gonna work it up the field. The cup is really putting pressure on their on their ability to, to keep moving the frisbee. Which is great. They're doing it, it's a great adjustment for them. Oh almost a Callahan by number <laughs> eighteen. He tried really hard to make it a oh. Callahan. Oh and hold on. There's a foul call, looks like. Number seven had a layout block there on the little dish into the end zone. But it looks like the player who caught it, number 10, is calling that his arm was pushed out of the way. Foul. Well, again, another long point, and we're seeing the emotions <laughs> start to rise a little bit. Patience is not really a, the strong point here at this <laughs> moment. <laughs> looks like it's the observer is agreeing it is a contested foul so 18 still has it on the end zone line looking for an opportunity to pass needs some to throw something unfortunately throws to the defensive player Titan with the disc working it up oh nice pass lots of time number 11 throws to number 93 for the score with an extra double zero, huge layout behind. And Titan well. scores, that makes it 12-6. That was a long and entertaining point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vortex did a lot of really awesome things there. They've definitely ramped up their energy. The one thing I think they really need to work on is their end zone. They get really impatient on that end line and don't have a lot of really open options. I, even if they have to take a time out when they get there just to like take a breath and set up a solid cut I think that would be something that would help them because they're just not quite capitalizing on those opportunities that they're getting I think they had like six tries at that point or something like that they had, a, they had at least five opportunities yeah. to score in that point and right on the end zone line so yeah I mean any coach will say you want to be scoring on that first opportunity if not the second opportunity but five is five is pushing it <laughs> And I'm sure Titan is happy not to have to go against that cup. Their, their zone, uh, Vortex's zone is really looking like it's working well. It's forcing a lot of turnovers. It's making Titan work extra hard. I'm glad uh, they went away from their original game plan of just <laughs> playing person defense. It's made this game a lot more exciting for us and like has really gotten their team back into it. Yeah, the, ga the game seems much closer now, even if the score doesn't reflect that. Nice pass. Number 66 with the disc. Looks like Titan is playing person defense. 66 wide open, pass to number 99, but unfortunately defense got there first. Great D by number 88 on Titan. And Vortex sets up their zone again. Titan's gotta work it up. Titan in their own end zone on the sideline. Tough place to be. Cross field throw is going to be a into the wind. Oh, that was a good look. Good idea. If nothing else, get the disc upfield away from that tough position where you're throwing any any dump or swing passes into the stiff wind. It looks like Titan is um, maybe showing some signs of fatigue. Their handlers aren't moving quite as much as they did at the beginning of the game. And we're seeing more throws like that. And number si 66 puts up a big uh, OI flick. It's number 88. Great score. And the score is now 12-7. Titan's still up, but I agree they do seem to be looking like maybe their handlers are getting more tired having to make all those passes in the zone. D 
the Titan coach did tell me that the, he is actually missing his two best cutters, or two of his best cutters, who are unfortunately injured and not able to play. I'm sure he's feeling the impact right now. That makes a big difference. Vortex actually also had some unfortunate luck at regionals. One of their players, I guess, was involved in some kind of collision and has had four surgeries since then. So he's unfortunately out on the sidelines limping around. We can see him in front of there. That's Justin Faulkner Chow. Told him I'd give him a little shout out because he has to be on the sidelines and can't be on the field. <laughs> it, being an injured player when you... challenge to be with your team on the side it really is and not able to help them on the field that's, that's not to take anything away from being a sideline player who talks and helps out sideline is say, super that's useful. one of the beauties of ultimate you can still be very involved and a key player from the sideline having a good sideline can make a team a lot better <laughs> nice pull by vortex front of the end zone at a while with the disc and we see that vortex zone again. This is the classic 3-3-1. Three, three, Nothing fancy, but it's working. Then moving it well, they're getting it past the cup, which is how they seem to be working best. Oh, nice grab, a little layout grab by number 22 to save the disc. Can't be too casual on your dump passes, that's for sure. Not with the pressure we've seen Vortex putting on now. They've had a couple heads up plays where they've just run right by the Titan player. Okay. Nice. Oh, there's an injury on the play. I believe it was before that, that pass that was missed by the Titan player. We'll see what happens with the Frizzy. Is it gonna go back? Looks like the observer is saying it's going back to that's the player that was standing in the area there. I think their feet just got tangled up and they went tumbling. He looks like he's okay. Yeah, number 22, he looks okay. Uh, that's a lucky break for number 99. He wasn't able to dig that disc out of the ground. So number 22, Titan, will keep the disc. Sal is coming in at one. Here we go. Violation called. Looks like probably number 22 started moving too quickly. The disc was not yet called in. 22 with the disc, nice pass to number 11, swings it over to 99, swings it to 15. Nice movement from Titan here. And a hammer to a wide open number 22. Is he able to catch that disc? Great effort there, but also great spirit. He kind of knew once he hit that <laughs> into the ground, he was a little bit questionable and he did in fact call it, it down himself. Yeah, that was great spirit. That was a tough catch. All right, Vortex is playing a, <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, they were playing horizontal and threw it, threw it away on a dump pass. <laughs> Number 11 on T10 picked the wrong line to stand at, now he's at the right line, and throws to space, number one with the goal, 13-7. Well, despite the, we've had a couple bodies flying around and almost injuries, but both teams have been pretty respectful to each other, good spirit. There's definitely some frustration on the Vortex side, but they're keeping it to themselves and it's not aimed at T-Tan at all, so it's really nice to see that in these long points and windy games and longer <laughs> games too that uh, the teams are still being respectful of each other they're calling things down when they think it is and yeah I, it's I, nice to I see. agree <laughs> it's it's great to see especially since the 
the format is now that you basically start in power pools, right? It's the top eight teams all together, so every game counts. Yeah. Every point counts. It's it's really important to be able to maintain that high level of spirit, but at the same time, it's tough not to let your emotions get involved. And nice to see too from such young athletes like what most of these players are under 20 years old and they have maybe been playing for five years or so so to have that good of a grasp on the spirit of the game and to be that respectful towards the other team is really nice to see yes it bodes well for the future of canadian ultimate actually the junior division is sponsored by the cut camps that actually happened the first international one happened in toronto this year i think they started back in 2011 and they're whole thing is they want to teach the game of ultimate and so young people can develop their skills but also just develop as a person and anyone that's been involved in ultimate knows that it is a very good sport to develop character as it is a self-officiating sport yeah i've always been so jealous that i play i started playing too early i didn't have all these opportunities like <laughs> cut camps and you know being coached by the best of the best yeah a lot of those ca counselors at the cut camps are all elite level players. Yeah. Must be pretty awesome for these young kids to get the opportunity to play with and be coached by them. Nice grab by number 99, box out. Yeah, we just get to be entertained by their new skills <laughs> instead. <laughs> Fantastic. And that is a nice score by Vortex. Huge hack, great box out in the end zone. Score is now 13-8. Well, other exciting things happen in Youth Ultimate. The Under 20 World Championships are happening in Waterloo next week. There actually are a couple of players on the field that are going. I think each team has a member that's going to Worlds to represent Canada. So very exciting for them. That's got to be another thing they have in the back of their mind that they're going to Worlds in a week, and this is. While it's still uh, nationals, it's also kind of a tune-up to go and face against the rest of the world. Right, but it must also be tough to, to manage playing like a national championship tournament at this and know that you know in three more days I'm going to be also playing at world championships. Uh, I was talking to the Titan coach and he said that he's not playing his player that is going who is representing Canada on Team Canada. Uh, I believe is number 22, and he said that he's not playing him every game. He's letting him have a break in some games because he just doesn't want to not like not be fresh for getting to work. Yeah, and you know, there's quite a few younger players that kind of elected to not come to junior nationals just to avoid injuries and really be fresh for Worlds. So it is still nice to see these young athletes kind of doing both, but it must be in the back of their heads that they don't want to get injured for Worlds. All right, so we have Titan with the disc at the brick mark. Once again, we see that vortex zone. Titan is able to swing it. Nice movement from the handlers, keeping the disc moving. Once again, that cup is getting very close to their <laughs> the thrower. On the sideline here, looking for an option. Nice upfield pass. I think he got his <laughs> number 84 Petsy. I think he got his foot stepped on. He's calling an injury. Oh, maybe he got something in the ribs. It's hard to see, but it's always it's nice to see that the juniors are are willing to you know sacrifice uh, their playing time to let someone else who's not injured get on the field. You don't even see that in, in uh, yeah. senior <laughs> very often. The self-preservation is nice to see. <laughs> it's not always a thing in juniors, as we've seen bodies flying all around. <laughs> all right, so number seven comes in as a replacement. Nice dump pass, moving it sort of towards the middle, getting it up. Yes, disc is in the middle of the field. Number 12 has it. Great movement by Titan right now. Nice short passes. Smart choices, not forcing anything, taking what's there. Looks like Vortex Zone has now gone to person D. Great get grab by Edouard. Looking for an option, throws to the open side. And 
a nice throw to space. <laughs> Excellent read by number 16. <laughs> Able to reel it in. It's in that notch. Great goal. Well, I believe the score is now 14-8, even though on the scoreboard it says 14-7. And they're just... Yeah, 14-8. Go ahead. You were going to say. Oh, I was just going to say that was some good defensive pressure there. Just a little bit of a misread, and it kind of popped up, and Vortex wasn't able to come down with that. Well, they had a nice transition from zone to person D. I think that's the first we've seen of their transition. They've, they've managed to keep the zone most of the time. Uh, I think Satan reacted well. They took nice, easy passes. They didn't force anything, and they were able to score. And so their D-line has a chance to end the game, and actually the horn just went as well. There's the horn, 225 for the last point. And Titan will win, regardless of the outcome of this particular point. Pull goes out of bounds. Vortex is going to take it in the middle of the field. Number 21 with the disc. Looks like, looks like Vortex is running in isolation on the far side. Chu, number 66, who has gotten a lot of separation from his defender. Easy score, and that's game. Well, that's a great way for them to end the game. They had some struggles throughout. They kind of came back at the end, and to be able to go into their next game, ending it on a point like that, that's really good for Vortex. Yeah, I think they, there's a lot of positives they can carry forward uh, into the next, well, their next game, their their day tomorrow, everything going forward. Their zone, which I don't think they had necessarily discussed before they got to this game, worked it really well. worked, yeah. <laughs> and Satan too, I think they have a lot, uh, they can build on this win, keep going up and up. They've, there are two wins on the day, one on Universe, one by quite a bit. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how these teams perform for the rest of the tournament. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to yeah, thank you. do commentary with you, and I'm sure we will see each other again. Yeah. We'll be back. <laughs> Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. Send Ultimate Canada commentary if you have any, and we will see you soon.